Welcome to the Parents Halloween 2020, this time with the lovely Craftians. So, who are you, what are you playing tonight, and where can we find you normally? Starting with Cassie. Hi, I'm Cassie. I'm the GM for the lovely Craftians. We're an all-ladies Call of Cthulhu podcast. You can find us on Twitter, at Lovely Craftians. You can also find us on Spotify or iTunes or any of your favorite podcatchers. I am going to be playing Red, who is a baby cobalt thief. All right. Next, we have <laughs> Sam. Hi, I'm Sam, and I'll be playing Mavis. She is a 63 year old Goliath who is looking to find a glorious death. Also, the adopted guardian of red <laughs> <laughs> all right and finally we have ashley hello i am ashley i am going to be playing a tabaxi magician called tuna all right so this is the players let us begin So, as per usual, for the Penance Halloween specials, you have responded to a request for work put out on the wall of a tavern. You arrive in the tavern itself and get told that you will be in the back room. As you make your way through the back room, you'll notice this is the room with the actual lockable door, rather than the room with the curtain. After a couple of minutes of being sat down with your drinks, a quite thin-looking man makes his way into the room sort of nervously closes the door behind him, takes the pile of books he's carrying over to the window, nervously looks at the window, pulls the blinds over, and then comes over to the table and goes, Hello there, um, you, you, you've been the one to reply to my, uh, my job, yes? Hi. Uh, yes? Yes. Marvellous, marvellous. <laughs> I'm Kelvin. It, it's just a simple job, you just need to go to this small village and um, collect a small thing for me. Oh. Scared man, scared man. I know. He's very shaky, he seems. Yeah. Uh, Why? Why uh, scared? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. I just, um, just need this stuff back very, very, very soon. Um, <laughs> I have nothing to worry about. Hmm. Right. Um, and what are we retrieving? Yeah. Oh, it's, um, it's, um, a small, um, pair of, um, well, they're, they're small, fluffy animals. That's all we need to know. A small, fluffy animal? Yes. Um, sir, do you realize that there are a thousand kinds of small, fluffy animals in this world alone? Well, We're gonna um, need a little bit more than that. They're very, uh, <laughs> very funny. Um, they're very special, small, furry animals. They have lovely, fluffy ears. Can. They're not dangerous at all. I mean, they're very well looked after, I'm hoping. Hmm. Why? Why lose this? Well, um... Um... <sighs> all right, fine. I I work as the, um, the treasurer of a sm small accountancy guild. And, um... Well, on the, the last works gathering, as it were, I had a, a few too many of the, the tipples of the evening. And a gentleman approached me and offered to sell me some small furry animals. And I, being rather intoxicated, thought it was a fantastic idea. Unfortunately, it cost me half the treasury of my guild. And in order to get my refund, that he has quite nicely offered me, I need to make sure that these animals are return to him. The problem being is that the animals never arrived here. The cart that was bringing them here sort of fell off a cliff. Scam. Sound scam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, but the driver's fine. He's fine. He's fine. I mean, if he's fine, the animals are fine, right? They're in this small 
mountain village, just, just at the edge of the mountains. It's not that far, but um, the animals um, may, may be loose, and um, I, uh, I will need them rounded up. So you're saying you took the nip a little bit too hard, got scammed out of half your guild's money, and then didn't even get the merchandise that you got scammed out of, and now we gotta go get it back for you? In a nutshell, yes. But Sounds fine. fine to me. They're, they're innocent little animals, and they're not going to be any trouble. Right. What animal? What name? Bunny? Um... <laughs> Um, well, you, we can name them whatever you like. I mean, we can call them Fred and George. That'd be lovely names. Mm -hmm. So how many of these small furry animals are we supposed to bring back for you? Oh, just, just two of them. I mean, um, just, 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 just two of them. Yes, that would, um, that would suffice. Yes. Do you need them alive? Well, I, um, I'd probably get my money back easier if they were alive. Hmm. Okay. No eat. Yeah. Unfortunate. Well, that's all I need. One more question. Can we get at least a color? <laughs> You're <feel> funny. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. All right. Can they're, um, not, they're not, very not unique. Not. You'd know one if you saw it. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. How catch? Little Red's right. How are we supposed to catch these things? Do we just like, walk up to them and grab them? Do we need to put them oh, in a no, sack? No, no, no. <laughs> um, I, I will leave that to your ingenuity, but um, don't don't start them. Why? Uh, they're just innocent creatures. <laughs> they, they, they wouldn't. Um, yeah. <laughs> they, they would be very nice as pets. I mean, they're, they're very lovely pets, apparently. They're very loving and caring and good for things. Come with. Scared man, come with. No, oh, no, 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 no. I have to be here. I have to, you know, make sure that my guild don't find all the money that's missing until you're back. Mm. Oh, this sounds a little too easy. I was thinking the same. But, you know, maybe it will be something. As you were talking, Red was just looking up at you from the sling that's across your chest that she's sitting in. And then she looks back at this scared man. Just gives him the little I'm watching you fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this will at least be good you have training. You nothing to worry about, but you are all, um experienced with animals, right? Uh... Experienced enough. Yeah. I mean, you have dealt with big creatures before, yes? How big? Yeah. Oh no, no, just, just me asking questions. Don't worry. Uh -uh. The bigger the better, in my opinion. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, and little. No, 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 no. That's right, this will make you big and strong. If we kill something big, they'll write stories about you. Mmm. <laughs> Just happened first. Are any of you mages? No. Red points at Tuna. Tuna was like staring at her hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a magician. Why? No, I'm just, just interested. Have you, um. Uh, what was your, um. Magical law. Ah, uh, it could be better, but it's not worse. Just if out of interest, if I was to say the word um, Arathodian, it wouldn't mean anything to you, would it? Do I roll for that? Yeah, roll, <laughs> roll intelligence. Let's see. You vaguely remember hearing something about them. They're some fabled creature. They don't exist. Uh, it's, it's not clicking anywhere in my head. I might have heard. I might not have. I can't give you any. That's anything. wonderful. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's uh, that's fine. Mm. Don't worry about a thing. I'm worried. Tuna's gonna like edge over to 
Mavis and Red and kind of like whispers, Sky seems a little bit, uh, and she does like the cuckoo hands, like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I think if we accept this job, we might want to be a little bit careful because he's very hesitant to tell us stuff. He seems yeah. hesitant about everything. Yeah. A crazy man. Well, let's go find his puppies or whatever he lost. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> yes. You have a net or something, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Well, then, is there anything else you'd like to know? Not uh, about you. So, uh, compensation is given on return of these two little fluffy, furry, whatever you wanna call it. Oh, um, of course, yes. Um, if I have to, you know, pay extra to make sure they're alive, then that's fine. Um, How much extra? Oh, well, um, they're not venomous, so, um, maybe an extra 20 gold? Kinda like looks over at Red and Mavis. Eh? Half now for trouble. Mm. I like the way you think, little red. I like the way you think. Well, <laughs> if, I, if I had any money, I, I would gladly pay you. I have nothing until these are returned to me. Mm. Mm, collateral. Mm. You um, you you aren't paranoid, are you? I mean, you're kind of making it a little bit hard not to be paranoid, but just just be careful where you look. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Mm. I say enough talk. There's no glory in talking. Red just nods like, hell yes. All right. Mom says go, we go. All right, okay. So he gleefully tells you that you will have a cart leaving tomorrow morning. And he, again, seems quite ecstatic that you've taken the job. Are you wanted to ask him anything else before he leaves? Did we ever get his name? Ooh, yep. Kelvin? Kelvin, yes. Kelvin. Mm. We're fine when done. Oh, uh, I frequent here. I'll be in this inn, don't worry. And if you do bring them back, please don't bring them in here. It might cause a scene. Mm. Why? <laughs> no reason, no reason. Oh, no, what? no. Why? No, 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 <laughs> no. Just people aren't used to magical creatures. Our band? <laughs> you're, you're very amusing. This man is so shaky. <laughs> Scared man. Yeah. All right. I have no more questions. Yep. Yeah, I'm good to go. I'm All ready. All right. So the next morning you get on this small cart and travel on almost completely northbound journey. Eventually you see the mountains in the distance become closer and closer and just before the big trail that seems to lead up the mountains itself you find a tiny village which is sort of nestled in this sort of horseshoe-like area and as you descend your cart into the village you see several obvious landmarks. You see a town hall which looks like a barn that's been renamed. Uh, you can tell it used to be a school and it used to also be a barn because there's a sign outside that's been edited using paint. <laughs> you see the inn, which looks like a sort of half barrel motif. It looks like it was made for miners that came to mine the rocks in the area, but it looks like it was definitely made for humans, even though everyone around seems to be a dwarf. You mm. see a fountain with three stone dogs on top of it, and next to the fountain is a small market with an obvious blacksmith stall. There's an obvious like caravan that seems to be selling alchemy supplies. There's a flower stall that looks unmanned, and there's a stables. You see a house with a very overgrown garden, and then there's a path leading up into the forest and round to the edge of the cliffs. As you arrive into town, it's early evening. Your choice for where you can go is the town hall, the inn, or the market square fountain area. Where would you like to go? Mm, what area seems to have the most people that we can tell just by looking? Most people immediately is the market square. Yeah. It's got at least three people wandering around. It looks like the blacksmith, the owner of the caravan, and it looks like the stable boy who's come out to get the horse. I guess Market Square. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So as you pull into the Market Square, immediately a sort of youngish boy who looks dwarven, but he looks like a sort of like late teens for a dwarf, runs out, takes the horse off you, and sort of starts on getting it prepared to go into the stables for the night. 
And as you do, you hear a voice from the blacksmith waving and going, Hello there. You come for the whacking festival? Whack? What whack? Whack Aye, whack? the whacking festival. You know, the one where we hit that rat. You hit a rat? Oh, aye, very famous is a local bar whacking festival. Hmm. You know, it celebrates the history of when we ran them rats out of town. Is there a prize for the best one at whacking? Oh no, it's just the sort of joy of whacking things, you know. Oh, we can only give him a kids now, but, and he shows you this quite gruesome looking baseball bat, effectively, that he just holds it and goes, made it myself. You can sell it to children, you know, children are allowed to whack the rat. Adults are not allowed anymore after, well, you know, after Maud said the rat got, you know, brain damage, but, you know, kids are still allowed to whack the rat. Here you go, if you got any children, I'll please sell this bat to you. How Red much? takes out one of their daggers and she starts to, like, whacking the air very excitedly. Ah, the spirit <laughs> that. Well, I see it. Uh, how big are these rats? Well, the one we celebrate with is really just Jack in a costume. But, you know, if you see a rat oh. on the weekend, you know, hit it with a hammer, no problem. Okay. We're actually looking for some small fluffy animals. Do you oh, have you mean to... squirrels? Mm, maybe. Do we mean squirrels? I mean, we kind of new. Weird yeah. new animal. Yeah, this would be like a small animal that you probably have never seen around here before. Fluffy ears? Small animal I've never seen with fluffy ears? I don't know. You know when about that, Grunnins? And this sort of hissing voice from the caravan. A figure leans forward in the shadows and just goes, You know nothing of what I've not seen. Yes, that's why we asked. Yeah, let's see. Oh, wrote my name, he's a bit grumpy these days. Hmm. You know, says he gets a lot of abuse being a tiefling. Don't believe it myself. But you just hear this, like, gurring coming from the caravan and and his voice goes, You need to stop beating up Jack every year. It's not good for him. Oh, it's just a bit of fun. He's fine. The children can't hurt him that much. They broke his leg. Oh, that was a lucky shot on the knee. He's fine. Why does Jack not beat the children back? Oh, he's not allowed to. You know, that would be bad. You know, we can't beat children with bats. We're not barbaric. Hmm. Hmm. I say make it a fair fight. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jack's fight. The last five years, he's been quite happy to be the mouse. He just puts his helmet on, runs around. All the children run after him with these sticks, whapping him all the time. He loves it. Hmm, where Jack? Oh, well, where is Jack at this time of day? Uh, I don't know where he is these days. He's usually around later, though. He's probably going to speak to Daddy. Daddy? Aye. Who's Daddy? He's the goat herder. Why, why called Daddy? It's his name. Is he a father? I don't know, really. He might be. As far as I'm aware, he's just the goat herder. Hmm. Daddy goat man. This is a very strange, strange village. Children with bats. Weird is there, things? Yeah. Is there anyone else in the market square? You see a blacksmith stall, you see an empty flower stall where the flowers are all beginning to wilt. And you see the caravan that the tiefling is in, and you see the stables. Who owns that flower stand over there? Oh, that's Emmeline's stall. I haven't seen her for a few days, though. Usually she's out every morning singing, picking flowers, but in the last few days she's not been here. Hmm. Red starts trying to climb out of Mavis's sling. Down. Oh. Down, please. All right. All right. Don't fidget too much. There you go. And Don't then... go off too far. Ah, and Red kind of just waves dismissively as she toddles off towards the flower stand, trying to get kind of a, a better view of what's going on here. All right. So you look at the flowers. They are looks like various flowers of you know various shape, size, and smell, but most of them seem to be a bit two, three days old. <laughs> Is there anything on like the other side of the stand, like where a merchant would possibly keep 
Yeah, there seems just to be like a sort of where a merchant would stand, but nothing much more than that. Or yeah, there's a sort of seat as well like... where it looks like she'd sit down, but again, not much Got more it. than that. Nothing weird no. over here. Okay. So Red will just round the corner again around the stand and just shrug. Mm. I mean, if you're looking for flowers, there's a lot of really nice ones growing in the forest. But Emily knows where best to find them. Who would we talk to about some missing animals? Oh. Or a missing delivery of animals. Yeah. Oh, well. If it's a serious thing, you're probably looking for Aris. If it's a sort of smaller thing, or it's like something that you need help in the village, you're probably looking for Daddy. Okay. Even then, Aris should probably talk to Daddy anyway, so you might be better just going to see Daddy. Well, we will see your Daddy then. Well, usually he goes for the inn for the night time, have a couple of small jars. Hmm. So if you head there in a couple of hours, you should be there. Well, that seems the most efficient spot to go first. Yep. Red's wandering off towards the alchemy caravan. All right. Just toddling over. As you walk over, this sort of voice comes in and goes, Hello there, little one. Are you interested in the uh, alchemical side? Maybe. Mm. What have? Well, what is it you need? I have most things. Mm. You see a table full of like potions and powders. Red's gonna try and climb up to stand on top of the table with the rest of everything else, so she can like look at everything a little bit more closely. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you scrabble up the table leg. And you're now standing on top of the table. So one side of it seems to be, as I said, bags of like random powders, and the other side seems to be small glass bottles of various coloured liquids. Hmm. What favourite thing? Well, my favourite thing is, of course, a sort of very light purple-coloured hand with long nails sneaks out of the darkness and just taps a pack of blue powder. I feel it helps deal with the stupidity of this village. Red points at it with a little clawed finger. Poison? Oh no. <laughs> Drugs? Well, isn't everything? Mm. Mm. Are you trying to put that small creature on drugs, Gwenins? This is none of your business, Gerard. Yes. Drugs. Give, give drugs. We'll trade. What's this? What kind of drugs? Well, it just helps deal with the uh, constant stupidity of these villagers. It makes everything feel okay again. Hmm. So it's a lying drug. Not as such. It releases something in the brain that just helps you smile at stupidity. I find it helps with that bastard blacksmith. Here, you stop talking about me like that. Say what I mean. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Red fishes around in this little pouch that they've got, and she pulls out her dice. Trade? Huh? Mm, I think I could trade a little for that, yes. Huh? Lucky dice. Give three mm -hmm. dice, small pouch. Okay, mm -hmm. so you give him three small dice and he gives you a small pouch of this strange light blue powder. <laughs> hmm. Drugs. I don't think there's gonna be much with that, Red. Not for Red, for animals. Oh, well, aren't you a little too smart for your own good? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So at this point, you notice the stable boy taking the horse and securing it in the stables, and then begins to pack up the stables for the night. The blacksmith and the caravan also begin to pack up for the evening. Do you want to talk to anyone or anything, or would you like to move on? So, Daddy was at the inn? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we should go there. Alright, the choices for the next one, so you're aware, is the inn and the sort of overgrown hut. I'm okay going to the inn. Yeah. In. All right. So as we move into the night slot, we journey towards the inn. The inn is a, as I said, a sort of half barrel motif door. And as you walk inside, there's a small dwarf tending the bar. 
There's what looks like a quite large dwarf sitting at the table. He obviously had black hair, but is now very peppered with like white specks throughout it. Looks like he's eating and drinking. And there looks like a man standing in the back tuning what looks like a lute in front of a fire. And as you sort of walk in, the blacksmith walks in behind you, orders a drink and sits down next to the dwarf. Do you think you can point out this daddy to us when he shows up, if he's not here already? Well, if you're looking for him, he's right here. And he sort of pokes the dwarf in the shoulder. And the dwarf turns around and goes, Uh, hi, you're looking for me. Go Your daddy. daddy. I, uh, how can I help you? We're looking for a lost shipment of some sort of small, fuzzy animal. Plural. Right. Did it come over the mountains? Did it, uh, how would we have anything to do with it? Well, apparently it fell off a cliff. Oh, you're here with the wee man that fell off a cliff, aye. Oh, right, okay. Well, that was about uh, ten days, two weeks ago. He's uh, being tended to in Mod's hut at the moment, but uh, what is he in need? Uh, he had some sort of shipment. Oh, you mean the books? Books? Aye, he's got quite a lot of books in his caravan. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Do you know where his caravan is, or oh, was it... The, uh, the remnants are still lying out in the field. We sort of tidied most of it away that we could, but uh, the only real thing we found after, you know, dragging him away and getting him looked after is uh, the books, obviously, which are, I thought were in the town hall, and uh, that was really it, mostly, most of the splintered wood. Mm. And no strange animals have been about? Well, uh, what do you mean by strange? Uh, ones you haven't seen before. Uh, well... Not many I've not seen before. I mean, ten my goats and I've got my, my sheep dogs, but there's not really been much else out there. Mm. What kind of animal are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Fuzzy eared animal. Magic. Fuzzy eared animal. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not familiar with this. If it's magical, you might want to speak to Maud. She might know something about it, but myself, I'm not. I know nothing about a fuzzy eared animal unless you mean like rabbit or something, but we haven't seen rabbits in this part in years. Mm. So you said the guy who was driving his cart who overturned, he's being tended in whose hut now? Oh, it's Maud's hut. The, uh, the one outside there, the one with the overgrown garden. Mm, she might have more of an idea. Okay. And no strange animal sightings since this man has shown up? Well, no animal sightings, no, uh, had uh, one or two people in the village go missing, but that's it, mostly just people come and go, you know, we, we don't really have a sort of stable sense of, you has to turn that way, really, I mean, the flower girl went missing about three days ago, apart from her, nah, nothing I could say. Huh, did the weird man mention that the animals eat people? The what? Mmm. Animals that eat people. Well, we don't know. Well, uh, as far as I'm aware, I mean, maybe there's something in the mountains, but I've not seen any animals that eat people near here. Mm. Well, so maybe I was a bear once, I suppose, but do bears really eat people? Mm-hmm. 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 Not if you eat the bear first. Ah. Right. Well, Maeve is in that hut that we passed. Maud, I, uh, oh, she was there overnight. The morning she used to go to the market to buy, like, stuff off runs. It's mostly just, uh, healing poultices and stuff like that. She's kind of the healer around here. Hmm. Interesting. Well, shall we go interrogate the man? I mean, might as well. Alright, well, if you can do anything else, please come speak to me. I mean, I'm usually out in the field with my goats, but if any of this continues, I might have to go speak to Harris about it. Mm. Yeah. And another question. Is Daddy your name or your profession? <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure lots of young men would love us as a profession, but uh, my name is Daddy. I, it's uh, spelled in the old dwarven way of D-A-D-I. Ah, mm. okay. Interesting. I'm sorry. Is that your name or is that your profession? (laughs) (laughs) 
All right. Um, well, many people in time and firms have called me the father of the village, but uh, it's not literal. Mm. Much that uh, okay. love it to be is definitely not literal. Fascinating. All right. Well, this is turning into a rather detective case, I guess. Wear flower, girl. Yes. That's probably something we're gonna need to look into. Have you seen the flower girl? Em- Emmeline? Emmeline is her name? Emmeline. Uh, last time we saw her, as I said, was about, uh, I saw her about three days ago. Pink and Lost had these really nice, wee little bluishy flower suit with a goat pen. Mm. Have you seen those flowers before? Are they commonly grown here? Oh, aye, they usually come out every sort of midsummer. Very popular with people. I mean, it's one of the things that sells the most, if you know what I mean. Hmm. No one <clears throat> Well, we all kind of looked for her. We checked around, and, but we just couldn't find her. And Harris is thinking she's eloped with someone, but I don't think Emmeline would have done that. Oh, who? Who boyfriend? Hmm. Well, she was seen romantically, shall we say, with young Luther, the stable boy. But if he's still here and she's okay. gone, then, you know. Mm-hmm. So I guess after we talk to Maud, next thing is to talk to the stable boy. <sighs> so much talking. All right, let's go. All right, so what are you going to do now? Can we go to Maud's place? You not want to talk to anyone else there? You want to just go straight to the next choice? Oh, yeah, there, there's some other people here. Duh. <laughs> I'm just, just checking, it's completely your choice. You can go anywhere you want. True. Do y'all want to talk with anybody else? I mean, we can always come back. Uh, Do you want to talk with, like, the bard or anything? (laughs) Well, we only have so much time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we could try talking to the bard, I think. Either the bard or the barkeep. Yeah. Whoever is going to be the most... Not to totally metagame, but whoever is going to be the most in the know of things, aside from Goat Daddy. Yeah. (laughs) Goat Daddy. (laughs) Maeve is just going to, like... Shout this to the bar. Let's just make this fast. Anybody know about a missing caravan cart that smashed and any weird animals? At this point, the barman sort of goes, Oh, right, uh, customers, hang on. He sort of runs to the kitchen and comes back. And you hear the sound of a wet cloth slamming on the bar and he's frantically scrubbing this bar top. And he's like, I'll, I'll be a moment, I'll be a moment. And the man with the look just turns around and looks at you, shrugs and turns back towards the fire. Mm. So a couple of seconds later, this little wet cloth is like is thrown behind the bar, and you're right. Hello there. How can I help you? We've been hired to look for some lost merchandise. I guess. <laughs> oh, uh, great. Uh, what what is it? What can I help you with? Small fuzzy animal, fuzzy ears. They're coming back, Daddy. They're coming back. I'm gonna get me a whacking stick. And you wow. see the dwarf running off and coming back, waving this stick. At this point, you see the dwarf about? behind you suddenly oh. going, Reese, put the stick down. They're not here on behalf of the squirrels. The squirrels aren't going to overthrow this place. Put the stick down. And the barman sort of looks really <laughs> sad and just begrudgingly drops the stick on the floor. Goes, so you're not here for the squirrels? Um, uh, maybe... Are we talking like hypothetical squirrels? Or are we talking like actual squirrels? No, oh, the, the squirrels. They're, they were on the side of the rats, you see. The only reason that we won the whacking war was because we are dogs and they would have had squirrels, but it was winter, so it was hibernation, so the squirrels couldn't join in. And if the squirrels had joined in, they'd have won, but we won because the squirrels were hibernating. That's what my belief. So those squirrels, they've got it in for us. At this point, you just see the old dwarf just put his hand over his face, just go, Reese, the squirrels were not going to join the whacking war. And we didn't have a whacking war. We had a rat infestation. Mm-hmm. I fully believe that those squirrels will have joined in. I think we should whack the squirrels, Daddy. Mm-hmm. Yes, Reese, mm-hmm. I know what you think. Several times you've had your speeches in the town square about it. I don't believe the squirrels are on the wrong side. The barman just looks at Daddy, just really annoyed, and just then just grumbly puts his stick back in the kitchen and comes back. Hmm. Red, red believe. Weird squirrels? You well, see we've, weird squirrels? Well, we've not really seen any weird ones. We've only seen about two in the last six months, but that's just their spies, you see. 
They're spying Where? on us. Where spy? Where? Oh, uh, well, there was one the town hall. Look, he's looking out at Jack's outfit. He's looking at it going, nah, they make them wear that. If we can have armor like Jack has, we won't get our heads bashed in. Ah, you see? At this point, you just see the dwarf behind you just go, I'm not getting involved in this anymore. I apologize for, well, for the bartender. He just goes back to seat. Red like waves him off. Where other squirrel? Oh, right. The other squirrel was in the marketplace, I'm sure. You know, watching all the moves here and there, making sure it can make notes of where we are. I'm sure it's watching us. Hmm. Squirrel, maybe? Squirrel critter? Hmm, could be squirrels. There was only two of them that you saw? Well, I saw the one about four months ago, and I saw one last week. Yeah, four months is kind of outside of our time frame. Yeah. Last week. Last week could. I mean, as we're here, might as well. It's worth looking into. Maybe squirrel lead to other squirrel. Mm, maybe the squirrel took the flower girl. <sighs> hmm. Right. Well, nobody else has seen these squirrels. At this point, the, the blacksmith goes, What do you mean, squirrels? You mean the wee fuzzy things? The fuzzy what? Oh, the wee fuzzy ones you see in the tree in the square. Yeah, do you have a lot of those? Only seen one. Hmm. I mean, I named it after Gwenins. That looked hysterical with its big cheeks. What did this fuzzy squirrel that you saw in the the square look like? Well, it was sort of like a rat with a big fuzzy tail. Hmm. Mm. Well, Why you don't like say when ask? Well, you know, you don't really think much of seeing a squirrel. Just a squirrel, you know, face full of nuts, you know, squirrel. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe it's a squirrel we're supposed to get. Magic squirrel. As if squirrels weren't annoying enough. Well, I guess we could go talk to Mod and see what this man has to say without a lost stuff. Yeah, maybe he might, like, I don't know, have some recollection or inkling of, like, what this package might be and we'll get a better description of what we're actually looking for yeah all right at this point the next choice you have is the town hall the market square or the forest are the three that has something actually going on in it you can as i said ignore them and go to mod if you want but those are the three that are available at this point the dwarf in front of you just goes well if you'd want to come and see the crash site uh, it's out by my goat pen you can come in there in the morning that would be good. We can see if there's any sort of tracks or anything. All right. So mods, town hall, market square, or forest? I don't think mod was an option. I think it was oh, the marketplace. Mod's not town an option, forest. though you did hear earlier that she'll be in the market square. In the market. Okay. She'll be there in the morning. Should we, I don't know, check the forest, see if there's any... Sure. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> all right. So yeah, I want... say either the forest or the town hall, because the town hall has all his books, and maybe there's a ledger book there. Oh, that oh that's true. Yeah, let's go to the town hall. Head. All right. So you get some rooms which the bartender weirdly doesn't charge you anything for, and then you have a good night's sleep. The next day, you wake up quite early in the morning, and you go to the town hall. As you arrive in the town hall, there seems to be a bunch of children there, and there seems to be one youngish female dwarf sort of running around and talking quite enthusiastically, holding a book up in the air. And you see there are some children reading, there are some children like using dye to like colour in pictures and stuff like that. And as you walk in, this dwarf turns and goes, Oh, hello there! Have you, have you come to join our children's learning circle? Mmm! Uh, yeah, I guess. Or she'll take a oh, out of the little... Come in, come in and have a seat! She takes you and sits you down and says, Now, would you like to read? Or would you like to do some colouring in? Read? <laughs> Colour! Colour? Oh, wonderful! Right. She sort of runs off and comes back with these two books. One she's like frantically flicking through and goes, Ah, there we go. There's a smiley George for you. Puts this book down open in front of you. There's this massive demon with huge teeth just staring up at you from the page. Oh. And she goes, 
There's a smiley George for you to colour. Now, we've only got red and black for colouring at the moment, but I think Ambrose over there will be finished with the yellow soon, so here you go. I'll just hand you this, like, small thing of paint and say, Finger painting's okay, isn't it? Mmm. Red and red. Red? Red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 for the red paint. And for those of you who likes to read, here's the other book. And she hands another book to you. You flick through the pages. It's obviously written in a very thick demonic script. Um, mm. scary book. Some yeah. of the writing is even in very dark crimson letters. I hope you enjoy your children's circle. I'm Ethel. Just ask me if you need anything. Oh, let's go help there. One second. And she sort of walks over to a, a child who's pointing at a word in the book. And she goes, I think that says wings. Uh. What would you like to do? Where are these books from? Oh, we had an anonymous donation. Well, I say anonymous donation. I found them when I looked at the crash site of the gentleman that was injured. I mean, they're just books lying around. I mean, any book's good for children to learn with, isn't it? Stall. Uh, well, I mean, if they were just on the ground. Oh, yes, I was just lying there. I mean, it was going to yeah. rain that evening, and I didn't want the books to get damaged, and... You know, I mean, look at that child there. And she points to one child who's literally finger painting around this massive grinning demon. Love Smiley George. Smiley. Right. Do you have like a stack of these books? I'd love oh, to. We've got, we've got about 20 of them in total. Oh, 20. Any of them kind of not fun to read? Like they just list things in it? Like numbers? Um, no, not really. All of them seem to be written this very old. It's like, it's like a scribble. It's like a scribble. Look, look, you can trace your finger over it. It's so fun. Uh, <laughs> and this one's full of circles. And she shows you a book that's full of these, like, pentagrams with, like, very deep crimson-coloured circles drawn around them. Like, look like they've been, like, traced in blood all around the edge. Uh, too red. Do you, do you... Good books for children yeah. to read. Do you know uh, what any of these books actually say, or what they're for? Oh, they're just stories. Mm. I mean, one over Tell there story. talks about raising a demon. I mean, what kind of nonsense is that? Oh, scary. Mm, yes. Obviously, it must be a story badly translated about a demon that loved his bed, and the person trying to get him up out of bed in the morning. Oh. I'm sure that's exactly what it's about. Yes. I mean, sure. You know, demons don't exist. That would be silly. That kind of <laughs> tugs at Tuna's sleeve like, is true? You magic lady, tell. You know. Uh, like demons and things are real? Is that the question you're asking, Red? Book is true? Um, um magic book. I want to like walk over and like pick one up or something. Yep. Uh, yeah, these are these are definitely probably not stories. And uh, yeah, I don't think I don't. Is it? Can I? Can I? Can I have this? No, oh, you want to? It could be a library. You could borrow books. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I'd love us to be a library. That's not what I was asking mm. for, mm. but mm. shush, shush. Mm, yes, library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Library. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I would love to borrow these books. Oh, but, well, we need a couple for the children. I mean, there's one over there that's full of several pictures of magically grinning George. He looks so wonderful. It's such a physique on him. But apart Let's from those ones, you can borrow any of them, George. yes. I will borrow this one with raising the demon from his sleep. I would like to know how to e efficiently raise someone from the sleep. And I will take this one with the little squiggly lines and triangles and stuff. Oh, wonderful. That's fine. You take it and enjoy them. Oh, there's a special one on all of them if you're interested. She walks over and she comes back with one that's obviously looks like it's bound with skin. And she goes, oh, this one's a what? It's got a weird texture to it. It's like a sort of feely book. It's weird. Um, can I, can I just, can I hold that for a second? Oh, yes. Sure, here you go. I mean, Maud's, Maud's already been in and shouted at me for letting me use these with the children, but she's not allowed to take them off me. She's got to speak to Daddy and make Daddy say yes. Mm. Can I borrow this one too? I just 
I'm so interested in this, and I feel That's like wonderful if I to learn. Well, maybe you could learn them and then teach the children them from them learning them. Oh, that'd be so wonderful. You know, that sounds wonderful, and that is exactly what I'm going to do with oh, these books. Hang on, listen, children, this lovely cat person, she's going to read you all the books when she's learned them. Isn't that wonderful? And all these, like, small dwarves just look at you in, like, a blend of glee and just confusion. Yes. Yes, small beings. I will take these books and I shall learn and I shall teach. And she kind of, like, shoves the books in her bag while it's just like, no, oh, it's not something that children should be messing with. That's wonderful. Wonderful, isn't children? Maybe we could build a stage. Yes, let's build a stage that you can stand on when she touches us them. I know the children start cheering and they go around and they start trying to get some wood out of the cupboard. Red right. starts clapping with them. Well, if there's a demon here, that's going to be a lot more fun than catching some fuzzy animals. Maybe animals demon. Mmm, good point. Demon squirrel. At this point, you, you notice on the wall there is a badly made leather outfit that looks like a quite obvious dwarf-sized rat with a large metal helmet. Hmm. Whack rat. Whack it. Whack. Oh, you want to see the, the rat, Red? Yeah. Whack. All right, we're going to do uppies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, yeah. you start looking at the costume. At this point, the dwarf... Oh, you've seen Jack's costume. It's wonderful, isn't it? It's what he wears every year for the children. Mm. And the children go around and they go, whack, with a big hammer. Why? Well, it's to celebrate, you know, chasing the rats out of the village. So the children all get together. We give them all large mallets. And then they get to chase Jack out of the village. Poor Traditions Jack. are worth keeping up. Hmm. Well, that's a good costume. Oh, yes. I don't think the helmet suits it at all, but Maud insists on it. Something about Jack getting brain damage. I mean, what kind of idiocy is that? Truly. Hmm. Is there anything noteworthy about this costume? Or is um, it just the it's outfit? It's just, it looks like a solid leather, like, it's kind of like a little leather armor that looks like it's got, like, clumps of fur glued to it in several places. It looks like it does have slight padding around the crotch area and it's got a large <laughs> metal helmet stuck to the top, but apart from that it looks pretty flimsy. Poor Jack. Yeah, but Jack well, loves being the mouse every year. He said this himself? Well, he, when Daddy asked him last, he said, Jack, are you sure you want to be the mouse? And Jack went, Jack is the mouse! Jack is the mouse! I'm so happy. I love it. Oh. Hmm. Sounds like he got hit in the head a little bit too much. I, I blame Maud for that. Maud thinks he has to wear that silly helmet. I mean, that's a metal helmet. What kind of rat has a metal helmet? Uh, whack rat. Yes, a warrior rat. Hmm. But we don't want children to fight warriors. That's just going to cause fights. Do it. <laughs> 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 well. You saw the rat. Anything else, Red? Stinky. Hmm, yes. Is there like a back office that they've been keeping these books and stuff in? There's a side office, yes. Can I just walk in there or am I going to have to sneak? No, you can just walk in. They're literally not caring <laughs> what you're doing. The children are too busy, like, coloring in these massive demon pictures. Got it. All right. I kind of want to go in. Not that Red can read, but maybe there's other stuff in here yeah to snoop about through all right you have a look through you eventually find that there is a, a large trunk you open the trunk to see things in it and you find several between full and completely empty bottles of gin hmm. it looks like someone has a hidden gin habit <laughs> oh i don't even have a flask or anything i was gonna try and take some Red's gonna just try and pull one of the bottles out of there and then just drag it across the floor. All right. It just makes this ringing sound as she drags it behind her. Yep. At this point, the dwarf comes in and says, Oh, you've got bottles! Brilliant! We can start a band with the children! 
Oh, wonderful. Do you want any more? We can hang them up, and if there's we, we sort of make a little bit of water in each of them, then they'll all sound different. It'd be a wonderful thing. Lots? Who, whose trunk? Whose bottle? Oh, that'll be Harris's. Oh. Mm. Interesting. Lots, lots of bottles. Lots. Mm. I'm sure Harris doesn't need the gin anymore. I mean, Daddy's trying to get him to cut down. Why? Something about his daddy thinks he needs to be a little bit more in control all the time. I mean, I think that's nonsense. Harris is lovely. Daddy judgy. Hmm. Well, we didn't come here to, I don't know, stage a intervention. So <laughs> we'll take that bottle. So Red can play the bottle later. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Red tries yes, to gro- do growing the, child. The jug. Red tries to do a blowing jug sound out of it, but I don't know how well that goes considering kobolds don't really have lips. Practice makes like perfect. Huffing on it, huffing on the top of the bottle. <sighs> Good job. <laughs> All right. As you're beginning to leave, the door opens and in walks a rather old looking gentleman and the other dwarf you met earlier who you know is daddy. And as they walk in, they go, Look, I think that we need to start, you know, making people go in pairs. I mean, some fishies going around this village. Oh, Daddy, you're just being overcautious. I mean, people elope all the time. And I eloped from at least three different villages when I was young. Aye, but people are not like you, Harris. Oh, they're fine. I mean, the young stable boy. I mean, he's sure he's eloped with that dreadful flower-selling woman. I mean, if she's gone, I'm not going to complain. And as you, they walk in, they notice you go, Oh, hello there. you come to view a wonderful village. Come to join the Whacking Festival, I imagine. Whack! Exactly. That's exactly the mm. thing we're looking for. Um, yeah. Um, I couldn't help but overheard someone's missing again. Aye, the, uh, the young stable boy's not turned up for rock this morning. Mm. Oh, stop worrying, Daddy. It's not going to be a you know, a bear or whatever it was you thought it was. It'll just be an elopement. People love to run away. I mean, I loved running away, especially when I had a lovely girl on my arm. Hmm. Seems strange. Was he last seen anywhere? Well, uh, can't uh, tell Arthur and Grunnings. The last time they saw him was when he locked up the stables last night. He's not been open this morning. They've still padlocked. The horses are going nuts inside. Maybe we should check out the stables. There might be something there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Nah. I do want to talk to Maud as well. Oh, we're looking for Maud, are you? Well, last time I saw her, she went into shouted Reese. Hmm. Mm. Why? Oh, something <laughs> about, you know, young man's thing, you know, the downstairs itch, as it were. Uh, what? Hmm. Well, what? you see, um, Reese has a small uh, habit of, uh, <laughs> of sowing his seed with um, travelers, as it were, and uh, he's uh, quite renowned for having a small downstairs itch. Fuck I think, uh, I think Reese would rather you didn't spread it that much, Harris. Oh, nonsense, Daddy. I think he's fine. A young boy needs to learn. He can't just, you know, do things to anything. I mean... I remember when I was a very young teenager, I once thought I could do things with a wooden horse. I mean, the splinters were horrible. At this point, you just see the other dwarf just look with eyes wide at him, just like, You are a very strange person, Harris. (laughs) Harris is very experimental, Daddy. I I never thought things should be, you know, just as they think they are. They should always be explored. Yeah, yeah. Earmuffs. (laughs) (laughs) Red has like a leather aviator hat where it's got the flaps on it and Mm -hmm. she pulled down on the flaps a little bit tighter to her head (laughs) maybe muffle sound every time Mavit says earmuffs but she can still hear so she's like see farm yep real good farmer farm with strangers yep you should never do it why danger well why they might have bad ideas all right off we go! We're gonna go see Maud! <laughs> Alright, so your next choices are staying in the town hall, going to the inn, or going to the market square. So town hall, inn, or market square. 
and Maud was just in the inn screaming. Maud was seen things. going into the inn. Okay, I'm gonna vote in then. Same. All right. So you leave the town hall, and you walk across and head back into the inn. As you walk in, there is a argument going on between a sort of older woman and the barman. The barman's going. I can't help it. They're attractive. They like me coming upstairs with them. You shouldn't be sleeping with people, especially if you know what you have. Oh, come on, Ma. You know, you gotta be young once. I've been young once. I didn't enjoy it. I like being sensible. If that makes me old, that's your problem. Oh, come on, Maud. You know, I'm just having a bit of fun. You're lucky I can treat it. Oh, come on, Maud. It's not that bad. You're very lucky I can treat it. <laughs> Farm like itch? This? Farm itch. From farming. Farm itch? Like, rash. Fleas. Fleas. Uh. Mm-hmm. As you walk in, the barman immediately turns to you. Oh, right, customers. Uh, hang on. He runs out and gets the cloth again, slaps at the table, starts scrubbing persistently. And you just see the woman turning to you saying, Whatever you do, do not sleep with the barman. You might have the itch. Please. Yes, please. That's why we don't take naps with people we don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good life advice. <laughs> Nap safely. Yep. So, are you Maud? Yes. What do you need? Well, we've been hired to look for a missing uh, shipment of sorts. Uh, the, the caravan that went over the cliff. Yep. She sort of raises an eyebrow at you and then goes, Oh, so you've come for the caravan. Well, mainly something that that caravan was supposed to be transporting, some sort of animal. Oh, you've come for the books. Oh, thank God someone's come to get those bloody books away from Ethel. Yeah, she really likes those books and sm- the smiling guy. She's covering in demonic tomes. Yeah. How can, they not, yeah. how can they not see it's a demon? It's a demon. It's not Smiley George. It's a yeah. bloody demon. Coloring in sections of a pentagram saying that it's the color wheel? God's sake. <laughs> How have we not been consumed by demons before now? Luck? Well, I hope the luck Pure continues. Luck. So I can speak to Daddy and get those books away from her. I mean, I have some of them already. I will be willing to take more. Did you just let you take them? Uh, uh, we're borrowing from yeah, the library. Okay. Borrow forever. Yes. Hmm, that's a, that's a tact I didn't think of trying. Okay, fair enough then. So you're taking care of the driver of the caravan? Yes, he's, um, well, this morning when I when I went to speak to him, he seemed a bit more roused than usual, but for the last two weeks he's been sort of slurring in his constant sleep, really, just muttering something about some very eared creature biting him. Interesting. The cart itinerary that I looked over had no mention of any creature, so... I assumed he maybe got attacked by some sort of bear or something on the road. Do you have that itinerary still? Well, it's an itinerary I sort of made myself, but it's in my hut. Why would you read it for? Well, we're just trying to locate these missing items for our employer. So we can get them returned. Hmm. Well, as far as I can gather, there's about 22 books. And, and that seemed to be all that was on the caravan, really. Though there were some steel bars for some reason, but... We can't seem to work out what they were for. I think they might have been structural. Mm. Were they like small steel bars, big yeah, steel they, bars? They, were about, they would have fit over the windows and maybe over the back door. They were quite large. Mm. Not squirrels. Are we able to talk with this man? Well, I suppose we could go back to the hut and speak to him, I suppose. We just want to hear more about these fuzzy, bitey animals. Hmm. Well, I mean, what fuzzy, bitey animals would there be? I mean, he's hardly going to be transporting a fox or something, is he? Mm, people transport anything these days. True. Hmm. Well, I suppose we could he'll go back to my hut and speak to him. We'd appreciate that. Since there's not really anything going on in this, we'll just cut straight to there and just keep it the same time slot. So oh. you get back to Maud's hut, and she walks in, and as she walks in, you hear, yeah, it's really cool. You know, I've been practicing this song for years. And then you hear screaming, and Maud immediately, her eyes bolt wide, and she walks forward and goes, 
What have you been doing to my patient? Oh, just singing at him. <sighs> you can't sing, you buffoon. Now go away. And at this point, the bard sort of shuffles past you, like looking at the ground. And what has he been saying to you? He, 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 he woke me up. He woke me up. The furry creatures, they're coming back for me. They're coming. We're not safe here. You're perfectly safe now. Calm down. And you look over and Maud seems to be talking to a man <laughs> sitting on a bed in a side room. What do you want to do? When critters come. Yeah. When can we expect them? They're, they're coming. They, they will consume us all. They, they, they will consume us. Calm down. They're not going to consume us. I mean, what were they? I mean, you must know what they were. Now you're actually speaking. Speak up. What are they? And this point, the man goes, Maud just looks at you and says, He's making no sense. And she starts fishing through her stuff again and she pulls out the tiny pouch of drugs. Help? Oh, there you go. Happy. Maud just sort of looks at the drugs and goes, Well, I suppose I couldn't. And she sort of basically just takes the pouch off you and just basically holds it under his nose, you hear her. Sound and he goes, Ah, Ka, Kurath, Arathisian. And Maud goes, Sorry, what? Arathidian? <laughs> no, no, they're not going to be Arathidian. Speak properly now, what are they? And the man just sort of starts to slur really badly and she's like, Oh, Lord, well, at least he's going to sleep again. Do you want to say anything to it at this point? What did he say? He said Arathidian. They don't. They're not. They're not going to be Arathidian. What's an Arathidian? It's a very magical creature. It's kept by really rich mages, mostly used for feeding captives to. Oh. Red like waves frantically over it, Tuna. Man said. Man, hire yep. man. Man said. Arathidian. Yeah. Hmm. People think they're not real. They are real, but you don't see them. They're not the kind of thing you see in this realm. Boss man hmm. said name. That is true. He did say that name. Do you know what they happen to like look like or? They're polymorphs. <gasps> Could hmm. be squirrel. Squirrel. Could be the squirrel. Could be that squirrel. <clears throat> they are shape changers by most regards. They like changing shapes into anything really. It can be anything from a statue, to a broom, to a book. They can just change to anything, really. If they move, they have to return to their original form, but if they're staying still, they can stay still for hours in any form, really. And do they have a particular diet of things that they like to eat? They are substantially carnivoric. I mean, I think their appetite is one of legend. Well, that might explain the missing people. Mm. I mean, it's not possible that, that this man's talking any sense, right? Well... <laughs> she just looks at you all who have not answered and goes, Are you telling me that there's a chance there's one of these near my village? Well, two. two. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Two of them? Two. Mm-hmm. Are they, um... Well, let's put this biologically. Are they a pair or are they separate? Do they farm? You know, farm, wink, wink. That we don't know. We didn't ask that. Yeah. Right, well. We just know they're two. They do breed rather quickly. So that would not oh. be the best. And if they right. are breeding, we will have to find the source of the eggs before they hatch. Otherwise, we might end up with less villages. Yes. Where eggs? Where, where, where they put eggs? Where nest? be anywhere as long as it's somewhere relatively dark with near a good food supply. Hmm. Probably the woods. Mm -hmm. Okay. At this point Maud just looks at all of you and goes, why would there be any of these creatures in... I mean, surely they would not just transport them on the back of a cart. I mean, <laughs> kinda. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. I guess if that's the case, then we could best get looking for the nest, then. Yeah, that's probably the best idea at this point, especially since you're missing a few people in the town. Oh? Who's missing? I know the flower oh. girl went missing. Is anyone else? 
Stable boy? Yeah, we just found out about him. That's a shame. I I suppose his mother does live on the other side of the forest. Hmm, Mm. maybe he got jumped on the way in. Hmm, I'll need to go and find Daddy and speak to him about this. Yeah. Well, we can see if we can check the forest or maybe the caravan crash site. How find? Yeah, we can do some tracking. Alright, so... The next slot available will be either the town hall, the inn, or the market. At this point, you see quite a large group of people going towards the market. Should, Should we stable with <laughs> the market? I'm voting marketplace. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. All right. As you leave Maud's hut and you make your way towards the market square, uh, there's quite a large gathering of people, and it seems like the two dwarves that you saw from the town so they are standing on top of this sort of it's like a very rushed made plinth and you see daddy talking going right uh, just uh, for your own safety i think uh, we need to all start going everywhere in pairs um now when you're home it's fine but when you're going out and about somewhere go with a friend this is mainly because we've had a couple people disappear and you see some sort of panic looks amongst the crowd and one of them goes huh, huh. How do you know we, you know, we're not going to be next, or both of us aren't going to be done? Well, it's been a lot harder to take down two of you than one, innit? I suppose so. And at this point, the older dwarf comes forward and goes, No, no, this is not the time to be worried. It's perfectly fine. Daddy's just being overcautious. Now, I think if we be overcautious for a couple of days and nothing happens, we can go back to being our usual isolated selves. So, what would you like to do? Can we kind of check the stable area, see if there's any noticeable tracks or sure. something uh, showing You walk up to the front of the stables. The stable says padlocked shut. And it looks like it's a very old padlock. Are you wanting to look around the building? Are you wanting to break the padlock and look inside? What do you want to do? Is there anything noticeable on the outside first? Yeah. Are you going to walk around the outside or are you just going to look at the front of the building Uh, I'm gonna walk around walk around as you get to the back of the building there's an obvious like dent in the floor like something heavy has landed on it Mm. Mm. and as you look up there seems to be like a couple of planks of wood that have like splintered and broken so it looks like something has either got in or come out from there Uh, so am I able to go in through there yes you could probably climb up the back wall and have a look in if you want Cool. You I'm could probably good. boost me in if you can't. Yeah, that's true. In. All right. Yeah. yeah. Red's got to do a reconnaissance. <laughs> <laughs> He's the small one into the hole. All right. So All right, you, we're doing some uppies. <laughs> you, you boost Red up to the hole. She sort of pulls herself, scrabbles herself up to the top of the hole and looks in. Inside, the horses are still quite panicked. <clears throat> there is a massive blood pool on the floor directly at the bottom of where if Red jumped down, they'd land in. And it looks like some blood traces going up the wall. So it looks like one of the horses might have been killed and dragged up this wall. And out this hole that I'm now perched in? Yep. Oh, drag. So Would you wants, say something? If anyone wants to follow the drag, roll tracking. And this might be a little bit too much of an ask. Is this like a horse amount of blood? Or like a person. It's, it's an blood. obvious horse amount of blood. There's a lot. Of blood. <laughs> is it? Is it only one person? <laughs> a horse amount of blood. <laughs> only one of us roll for tracking, or whoever. No, that's, has that's it. fine with that kind of roll. That's that's fine. You notice that there's definitely a drag pattern, uh, and looks like some sort of large feet dragging this horse. It looks like to the back of the fountain. And as you uh... look at the fountain, there are two dogs on top of it. Um, three. There were three. Three dogs. Three dogs. Now two dogs. Hmm. I, uh, can I tap one of the dogs, like, nudge it with my, like, scythe? <laughs> yep. You tap the dog, the dog is solid stone. Hmm. Can I tap the other dog? Yep. You tap the other dog, it's solid stone. Whack. Hmm. Well, so it's been a squirrel and now a stone dog. Where go? Hmm, that's a good question. Hmm. Under? As you follow the path to the back of the fountain, you find it leads to a, a quite a large grate at the back of the fountain. Down. Ah. 
Yuck. Is there any way for us to lift the fountain? You can lift the grating. I mean, lift the fountain, wow. Yeah. I meant lift the grating. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna yeet the fountain. <laughs> so you lift the grate. It's very dark down there, but as you sort of look down in the evening light that you're in at the moment, you do see that there's definitely bloodstains straight down. Mm. Should we ask Daddy about what this sewer system is? I think that would be a good idea. All right. It's probably the best place to go after this. She did say they like dark places. Is <clears throat> Daddy still like close by? Yes, is he, he's like... still on the, the plinth talking to people at the moment. All right, I'm going to kind of jog over to him and be like, Hey, so... Uh, yeah, can I help you? So we think we've identified what the creatures might be. Their squirrel problem. Uh, uh, one, one, we say. Right, everyone, uh, we may have a development. Uh, I'm going to go and sort it out. Harris, will answer any more questions you have. Excuse me. And he makes his way down the side and he just leans into you and goes, Right, what have you found? We can't say in front of everyone else because they'll just jump into a panic. What is it you found? Okay, so we found a trail, um, blood, it looked like a horse amount, and <laughs> it went to behind your fountain here in a grate. Is that like an underground, like, water system you've got? Well, it's a large area under there, but uh, most of it's just the, the plumbing effectively for the fountain. Okay. How, it's how big is it down there? Well, it's, uh, it's about the size of the fountain itself. Must a little bit of space, you know, for getting a fat dwarf in and out there to fix it. I mean, mm. you had to rely on the, the previous plumber in the, the village, which was a, quite a large, large gentleman, shall we say. Okay, and the only way in and out is through that grate? Uh, there's a small grate on the front and a small grate on the back. Okay. Well, that might be where the pest problem's coming from. Right. What's best to do about that, do you think? Well, we can certainly go down and check it out, I guess. It might be where the nest is, if there is a nest. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll, uh, you want me to get a team together, or...? Mm, yeah. Sure. All right. More the I'll, merrier. Uh, I'll get Jack. Jack boy. And this voice goes, who? Huh? Hi, Jack boy. Come here. He's got to... Uh, gonna go find this thing beneath the fountain. Who? Right. Hi. Goodbye, Jack. Uh, like, uh, who, who should we take? Uh, what, what do you think we need? Um, whacking sticks? Whacking Whack. sticks, right. I'll get Gerald. <laughs> Wanders off towards the blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> so is that like great, like big enough for Maeve to fit down in? Yeah, it should be. Okay. Uh, cool. Anything else we need? We're just waiting for daddy and them to come back, I guess? Yeah. All right, so a couple of minutes go by and Daddy comes back with the blacksmith and Jack. All of them seem to have, like, clubs. He's like, ah, well, didn't know what else to bring, so we got some of uh, Gerard's best sticks. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Should do the trick. All right. Well, I think we can at least open it up and see what we find. All right. So are you opening the grate at the back or the front of the fountain? Which one was the one that we already opened? The back one. The back one. Yeah. The front one, there's still quite a lot of people standing around it. On the edge, oh, okay. The back one is quite quiet. It's going we'll into the back one. And yeah. At least if something <laughs> pops out the other side, we'll hear it. Yeah. So that's that. All right. What light source are you using to get downstairs? I've got candles. Can I... I'm going to light one of those. All right. Cobalts um, have dark vision, so I'm okay. All right. How long do you have flight and tinder? I'm not sure if I can do anything with that. Do they have an extra club and stick, maybe? I mean, if they have an extra club, can, I don't know, I can, like, take some of my rope and wrap it around it and then light it on fire. Tabaxi should also have dark vision, I think, because you're a cat. I don't know, man. My cat can't see in the dark for anything, so. <laughs> you got them glow eyes. <laughs> but well, for, for for the sake of goodness, we'll say I can also have night vision. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. All right, so you make your way downstairs, <laughs> and you see the room you appear into after climbing down this ladder seems to be full of eggs. But oh. one egg every about half a meter for the entire Oof. width of the room. The room is maybe about, let's say, four meters square. 
So there's lots of eggs. There's about 30, 40 eggs here. Right. So there's, there's lots of eggs here, yeah. Is it only eggs down here that we can see so far? Yes. Um. And you see them sort of around all this weird pipework that seems to be leading upstairs. Okay. Probably a good idea to smash these eggs. Smash. <laughs> nah. Are you, you going to put red down? Yep. Uh, down right, these. Red's <laughs> going to beeline it for the nearest egg and start cracking it on the floor and then trying to eat <laughs> out of the shell that's remaining. All right. So let's just see what happens as let's you Let's see do what this. terrifying thing happens for this. Yay! <laughs> I get a snack, so... so you smash the egg on the ground. It's, it's a lot more resilient than you thought it was going to be. But it doesn't seem to crack completely, but it does seem to leak a very strange, light pink-colored fluid. Oh, you bet I'm putting that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it has a taste, a taste sensation not unlike popping candy. Mmm. Sparky. And mm. the longer you... You basically take with having it in your mouth rather than swallowing it. There's a weird sensation in your tongue. Your tongue seems to be growing in length. Oh. If it's no good, spit it out. Red isn't quite sure if that's bad or not yet. So your tongue's now maybe about half the length of it again. So it now is sticking out of your mouth. You can't seem to retract it completely into your mouth. (laughs) Don't eat this. It's gross. Yeah, it's like, Maeve's gonna pat Red on the back, a little roughly, like, spit it all out! And then Red starts scraping whatever they can off their tongue, like a kid (laughs) who's tasted something they don't like. Yep. So your tongue is still quite long, but at least the sensation of popping candy has now stopped. Uh, well. Well, you learned a lesson. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. Gross egg. So we learn, nobody eat the eggs, just smash them. So I guess I'm gonna get to smashing? Uh Uh-oh. Yep, you start smashing one or two of them and immediately you hear a scream from upstairs. That's not good. And you hear the sound of people running in lots of different directions. (laughs) I guess Maeve will just kind of like go up to the sewer entrance and just do a little peek. Right. You see that two or three of the villagers have been completely maimed and are lying bleeding on the ground. You see that everyone is running in different directions. You see the old man standing on top of the plinth going, Calm down, everyone. It's nothing to be alarmed about. As literally there's this gigantic furry creature <clears throat> with massive ears. The size of like a large angry dog just running around with these massive claws, just slicing villagers up and being very protective of the fountain. All right. Well, looks like glory is afoot. Come on, the fight's upstairs. You dwarves, you keep smashing. So like, Maeve's gonna like pull herself out. All right. So what's Ashley and Red doing? So Red's gonna (laughs) follow her mommy. On that one. Okay. I think I will stay and help these dwarves smash these eggs. Okay. Let's see what the three dwarves do when confronted with what's happening. All three of them got exactly the same. All three of them are panically trying to get back outside to try and help upstairs. Fantastic. <laughs> so as Time you. To cook some eggs. As you climb up the top, you see one of these quite large dog-like creatures with massive teeth and huge, like, ridiculously adorably fluffy ears just looking around like it's got, like, blood-red eyes and it's like it's trying to defend the front of the fountain. Hmm. All right. Let's see. So we're going to want to try and, like, knock it out or, like, drink it. (laughs) All right. Uh, Great question. So <laughs> maybe it's going to go ahead and try and net the creature. All right. Roll, let's say, strength to try and throw a net over it. Okay. Yep. You throw a net over the top of it. Let's see what its reaction to the net is. It slices through a chunk of the net, but it's still quite encumbered by it. 
All right, and then she's gonna try and like tackle on top of it. <laughs> All right, again, roll strength. Let's see how this goes. Okay. <laughs> Actual one. <laughs> oh dear. Um, two. Um, What's two on this side? <laughs> one second. Let's see. Where's my table? Table. Oh, that's uh, funny. <laughs> two is the left arm. Left arm and five. I think that's. Yes, that's loss. A huge scything claw slices through the net and slices through your left arm, cutting it pretty clean from your body. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this thing is still trapped in the net, but its claws are like through the netting, and it's frantically trying to get out of the net. I have a bag of ball bearings. Can I toss like twenty or so underneath it so that maybe it loses its footing and smacks its head against the fountain and gets knocked out? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try. It's like a Home Alone <laughs> attack. I love it. <laughs> Yep. You roll them under, the creature can't find its feet, it slides, it slips, it cracks its head, and it is indeed unconscious. Yeah! Woo! Maeve's gonna still... pick up her other arm and wave it. <laughs> Maeve is still bleeding quite profusely from her missing arm. <laughs> Right. Is there any fire I can cauterize this on? You've got a candle. You do have Oh, a that's candle. true. I don't know how easy it would be to cauterize a missing arm with, with like a candle, can but you can, but try. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give it a try. <laughs> All right. Roll. Yep. Through perseverance alone, you managed to cauterize the wound <laughs> using a candle. The creature is still hell. unconscious at your feet. At this point, all the villagers are vying off. Even the old man has disappeared. What do you want to do? I have manacles. Can I put that on the creature? Yes, you can, yes. Cool. I'm going to put that on the creature. And yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> all right. Nothing else happens at this moment. So there is probably a second one somewhere. I guess I should see how... Tuna's doing. You look down, uh, Tuna's broken maybe about, let's say, 25% of the eggs on their own. They do require several stiff shots to break them. Yep. Nice. Good job. Just lost an arm up here, but doing okay. Colorize the wound. How'd you lose your arm? Well, I didn't do it on purpose. Well, I mean, obviously you didn't do it on purpose, but. Well, you know, just, uh, cut it off. It's okay. Not dead yet, unfortunately, but that's all right. We'll uh, we'll be moving along. Got to find that second one. So, uh, am I gonna get some help down here, or are we just, just gonna well, leave these little suckers to hatch? Everybody's kind of run around, so it might be good to keep smashing those. I'm gonna see if maybe there's like a like a cage or something I can put this thing in. I've got it in a net in the <laughs> manacles, but uh, I don't know. It's pretty pretty angry. So, I don't know how long that'll keep it. Tuna's gonna like fish around in her bag to see if there's anything that she could give to help. Uh, I got some holy water, some rope, and a net. I don't know if any of these are gonna help you. Well, it was cutting through the net pretty good, so I think metal's probably gonna be a rough spot. I got some chain, I'll probably chain it up, but I don't have anything to lock it with. Uh, when you say that, Red like pulls out a padlock and keys. That you're not entirely <laughs> oh, there we go. Them, but all right, well let's uh, chain it up, mm. and uh, we'll just lock it up, and then <laughs> let's uh, find the second one. All right. Good stuff. Good team. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Does anything happen? There is a strange cracking sound. Can we tell Ooh. where it's coming from? It's coming from beneath the fountain. Uh-oh. Um, like an egg cracking sound? Kinda. Uh, anything opening up down there, Tuna? Uh, I, I'm gonna take a look around and see if I see anything. Let's see, do you see anything? 
the floor is beginning to get covered by a layer of that weird pink stuff that Red was licking. As you notice, more and more eggs are beginning to subtly crack. Uh, um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, no, it's not, it doesn't look very good down here. Uh, that pink stuff is coming out and uh, a lot of these eggs are cracking. Oh. You magic, make magic. Magic uh, egg. Fire? Fry them? Mmm. Red rubs her tummy. Yeah. <laughs> Fried crackling eggs. What would that be? That would be an int roll. Intelligence roll. Intelligence. Oh, okay. All right, you cast fire. The pink stuff is highly flammable and begins to catch fire. So you're now standing in an inferno. Nice. So, um. uh, <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have one turn to um, escape before you're slightly singed. So if you can do me a dex roll to see how singed you are from escaping a basically a cellar full of fuel. Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Fire! Yep, you escape fine, with only a slight singeing on your tail. Though there's an inferno beneath the fountain at this stage. Well, I think I took care of that. Red comes Good over and starts patting at your tail, trying to help the singeing. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything left down there and it is edible, it is all yours, little Red. Mmm. Well, raw and did some weird stuff. Might not be too good cooked either. <laughs> At this point, you notice right. the tiefling panically packing all his stuff and trying to get a horse out of the stables. Hey, you got more of that blue stuff? Well, if you... Uh, yeah, he just throws a, a large bag at you and says, I'm getting out of here. Mm, probably the best choice. Can creatures talk? Do you mean the creature that you've taken oh, down, no. or...? Yeah, that's what she's, like, asking. Can they, in general, speak a language? Or uh, are they just, like, polymorphic? Probably more like dog likes. So they'll just growl, and that'll be about as far as they do. Okay, good. All right. False alarm. Carry on. All right. Well, let's see if we can track the second one. At this point, there's a sound not unlike howling. And you look up and see there's a second one standing on top of the fountain howling and as this howl starts more and more of these very tiny versions of them start crawling their way out of the fire looking incredibly excitable. They spark with like blue and yellow and orange and pink flame like like very magical creatures like highly magical creatures and they start like running straight towards you as a group. As you're slowly <laughs> about to be maimed to death by a large group of magical carnivoric <laughs> polymorphs Unfortunately, it is time to say that you have not saved the world. No! <laughs> but, as always, I love having you guys on. Where can folk find you? So I'll let you do your entire plug, so away you go. <laughs> So when we're not destroying the world in your universe, we're off destroying the world in our own over at the Lovely Craftians podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Lovely Craftians. You can find us at lovelycraftians.com and basically any podcatcher that you like to listen to, we're probably hanging out on it and we'd love for you to come check us out. We actually just got a couple of summary episodes up, so if you don't have the time to go through the first two seasons <coughs> and you just want to get caught up fast we've got you covered mm -hmm. definitely recommend checking them out it's all good fun when you're destroying the world mm -hmm. right. so, and you guys do we're good at it <laughs> you guys do Call of Cthulhu yes? yes 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 all right and how often do you guys put episodes out we do a new episode every other week but if you're at a certain level on our patreon you get early access to episodes before everybody else does so Ooh. Mm -hmm. very nice very nice so i uh, thank you very much <laughs> to my guests this evening i genuinely love having these guys on apart from that i should say good night so good night yes good night <laughs>